Emmaus. In them days, beggars, in order to get just a little uh, something from the public, they had to have a little something extra. And we see that in India. The only way a beggar, if he just stood on the street with his hand out and said, give me a coin or begging something, he seldom got anything. But if they had a little, uh, one little fellow had a monkey, I was amazed at him. He'd, this little monkey would give him a beating with a stick, take the stick and run him all over the street, give him a beating. And he'd beg, uh, if he'd see some body coming by, and then he'd have the monkey to run him again and run up and fall down on his face and lay his hands out trying to get someone to give him something. Another had a cobra snake and all different things. Everything that they could do, some little enchantment, something different to attract the attention of the passers-by. And we're told that blind Barnabas had two little turtle doves, and they'd done little tricks for the people. They would do little tumbles over each other. And they said that one night his wife got sick. Uh, this may be a fiction story. So he went out and he asked God if he would let his wife get well, that he would, he would take the, the turtle doves up and offer them for an offering the next morning at the synagogue. Well, the wife, she got well. So he went and offered the turtle doves. Then he didn't have nothing to attract the attention. After a bit, he said that his little girl that he had never seen, that she got sick one night. And the doctor said they could do no more for her. And so, so what he did then, he went out and prayed and he said, Lord, I only have one thing that I can offer you. That's my lamb. Now today, a blind man is usually led by a dog. They have dogs, they train them, that lead the blind. And uh, in them days, instead of having a dog trained, they had a lamb trained. And the lamb led the blind. And he said, this lamb is all I have, but if you'll let my little girl get well, I promise you, Father, that tomorrow I'll give you this lamb. So the little girl the next morning was much better, and she seen she is going to recover. So he goes up to offer up the lamb, and said on his road up, he met the priest. And the priest said, Where goest thou, blind Barnabas? He said, Priest, I go up to the temple to offer my lamb. God healed my child last night, and I'm going to offer my lamb because I promised him. He said, Blind Barnabas, you can't offer that lamb. That lamb it, said, I'll give you some money, and you go up to the buyers and buy a lamb and offer that lamb because you can't offer that lamb. He said, O oh, priest, I never promised God a lamb. I promised him this lamb. And many times we're always trying to do something. You know, it isn't your gift or your offering. It's you that God wants, you see. He said, I promised him I'd give him this lamb. He said, you can't give him that lamb. That lamb is your eyes. He said, O priest of God, if blind Barnabas has made a promise to God and I have keeping my promise, God will provide a lamb for blind Barnabas' eyes. And that's what happened. God had provided a lamb for blind Bartimaeus' eyes. The Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. And Bartimaeus received his sight from God's provided Lamb. And that same Lamb is provided tonight for every person here in this building. Jesus Christ, God's Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world, is provided tonight for your sins, no matter how black they are. Or it's provided for your sickness, no matter how sick you are or how afflicted you are. When he was here on earth, he went about doing good. And we've seen him that he didn't claim that he wasn't a healer. He claimed that God done the healing through him. And he didn't do any of it until God showed him by vision first what to do. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. 
And that was his ministry when he was here on earth. When he come to the grave of Lazarus, when he first heard that Lazarus was sick, he never heard it by man, he heard it by God. He said, our friend Lazarus, is, I mean, when he was dead, he said, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, and for your sake I'm glad I wasn't there, but I'll go and wake him. And when he come to the grave, he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast already heard me, but because of these that stood by, I said it. And then just to let them know for an example that they should pray before they uh, performed any signs or from God or asked God to do things. But he said he had already received of God what was going to happen. And that same Jesus that lived in that day, that come by the gates of Jericho, that gives sight to blind Bartimaeus, the one who raised Lazarus from the grave, the one that the woman touched his garment, the one who was in the, the fiery furnace with the Hebrew children, the one that met Joshua outside the gate, the ones that was up on the sea that night walking, that same Jesus is said in the Bible to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's promised to be with us wherever two or three are gathered together. In my name, I'll be in their midst. Now, that's... That's either the truth or it's a falsehood. And if Jesus isn't risen from the dead, has not risen from the dead, then, of course, he could not do what he promised to do. But if he has raised from the dead and claims to be the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's obligated to his divine promise to keep his word to every generation for he said, a little while, and the world will see me no more. Yet you will see me, for I will be with you to the end of the world. And he's obligated, his promises are guilty, until he makes them fulfilled to each generation. And my contention is this, that we have much connected with divine healing, so-called. But that doesn't take away from the real and there is no man on earth that can heal you. God has already did that when he sent Jesus to the earth and he died at Calvary. No man can save you. Only God can do that and he has already done it. When Jesus died at Calvary, he finished the works of your salvation for both healing and, and healing for your body and soul. The very same word is used every time. Did you notice our text tonight? He said, Thy faith has saved thee. And the Greek word there is called sozo. And sozo is used for both salvation and divine healing. You are either saved physically or saved spiritually. The same atonement was made by the same man on the same day. For he was wounded for our transgressions, with his stripes we are healed. And it's either the Bible is the truth or it's a falsehood. And there's no need for people in this day or any other day to try to explain it all away, to try to hide your unbelief. It's still God's promise. And if I didn't believe that Jesus of Nazareth in the writings of this book not expelling any of them. There's many promises that I may not have faith to bring to pass. But they're true just the same. And I never want, if I can't walk where Joshua walked, if I can't walk where Enoch walked till he didn't have to die and just went home with God one afternoon, if I haven't got faith to do that, I certainly don't want to stand in anybody else's way that's got faith to do it or try to explain it away but some theology, I'll come right out and face the facts and say, I haven't got the faith, but still it's God's word. He said he would do it. I believe it that way. And I believe that the same Jesus that was stopped by blind Bartimaeus' cry, you can stop him tonight. The same woman that touched his garment, he still can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. I believe he will do just as he said. In order to be God, he has to keep his word. Now, I can tell you something. 
And I have to take it back many times because I'm just a man. Your pastor can tell you things. He has to take it back. You can tell your neighbor things or your loved ones things, and you have to take it back. But God cannot take his word back. He has to keep his word. He has to keep it in order to be God. He cannot take back what he said. He has to keep it. He's duty-bound to it. And that's the reason that this great sacrifice had to be made. One man die for all because one man sinned and brought all men subject to death. And man, when you deal with sin, you have to deal with sickness because sickness is an attribute of sin. Sickness came by sin. And therefore, if the atonement is only applies to your personal faith in God, and the finished works at Calvary where everything we have need of, we rest upon God's divine promise of the sacred attributes of his death at Calvary is where we are healed and where we are saved. We must rely on those. There is no man can heal you by saying, well, I have power to heal you. When a man says that, he's wrong. There was in the Bible where God gave man power to heal, and they failed with it. And that was the apostles. Jesus, the Bible plainly states that this is to you, Church of Christ, brethren. This Jesus strictly did give the apostles power to heal. And about ten days later, they had miserably failed with it. And had a man with epilepsy that they tried to cast the devils out of him and couldn't do it. And Jesus said, how long will I suffer you bring him here? And they said, why couldn't we do this? He said, because of your unbelief. So you see, faith is the victory. We believe his word. Now, he never come and said he'd give us power to heal because we can't do it. Jesus gave them power to heal before the atonement was made. But after the atonement was made, the healing was settled forever. Now it's the individual's faith in that atonement that brings forth the results of healing. Amen. I hope you understand it clearly. No man today has any power to heal. Now that God has said in the church, first, apostles, or may I use a better word today, missionaries. Why they missionaries ever claim or wanted to be called missionary instead of apostles, I don't know. It's exactly the same thing, one cent. Missionaries, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, all these gifts are set into the church by Almighty God for the perfecting of the church and the body. Each one of those, like the preacher preaches the word, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. And then the other man, he has a teaching gift, so he teaches, and by that, he explains to the people, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. Another is a prophet or a seer who is divinely appointed to see visions and foretell things and tell forth things. That man, can, he can't heal. He can only tell forth. But what does it all do? Show that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. That's right. And he's with us today. Now, and if we will abide in our offices and do as God tells us and don't look right or left, but look ahead to Calvary, God will work miracles for us. And we're in that day. Certainly we expect and do know and know ourselves that much fanaticism is hooked on both sides for the healing of your soul and the healing of your body. But still, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and shows forth the same works and the same signs that he did when he was here on earth. And there will never, never has, or never will be a time that where man can at random do whatever he wants to. Jesus Christ could not do that himself, and no man on earth or ever will be that will live above the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, because he was God's perfect son and perfect sacrifice. And he plainly stated that in himself he could do nothing over and over, time after time. He said, I do nothing within myself, and I can do nothing in myself. But what I see the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. I do, my Father worketh, and I worketh hitherto. I do nothing till he tells me, or he shows me. So that my judgment is true, 
because it's not me that's doing it. It's my Father. I and my Father are one. Certainly, when he spoke, it was the same as God speaking, because God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And tonight, if a man is truly anointed of the Spirit of God, preaching the Word, it's the same thing as God going forth with his own Word. If a man be a seer or a prophet and be able to tell the individual something different or something to help him, and if they see that's the truth, then that's God speaking secondarily. And if what that man says don't apply, don't compare with the Bible, then the man's wrong. But if it's with the Bible, it's God's word to the individual. Do you understand? Jesus Christ bless you, my people. I love you. We don't know what day we're going to be called away from this world, each one of us. And then when you go, or if I go first, or you go, there's one thing sure, that we know that it's once appointed unto man to die, and after this the judgment. And we have to stand in his presence at that day. I have to stand before you. You have to stand before me, and we both stand before Christ. And from the depths of my heart, I'm telling you from my heart, I believe that Jesus Christ it was the Son of God, and he died and rose again and turned back into spirit form and come in the form of the Holy Ghost, that lives in the church today and does and performs the same things that he did when he was here on earth, the same way. I believe it with all my heart. And not only that, if this is the last time I ever testify in my life, my testimony is true. I don't say it of myself. If I would, I would be wrong. I don't say anything about myself but a sinner saved by grace. That's all. The same God that healed blind bar. The Timius heal me. He heals others. I heal no one. I cannot heal no one. But he does heal. He has healed. And people by faith accept it and get healed. Now, as a child, that light appeared. And I didn't know what it was. It appeared the very morning I was born by my mother. Oh, I know we got lots of things, but I'm not speaking of other things. I only have to answer for my own. And that, that came into the room as a little boy, a sinner. I, I began to tell people about seeing this, and the people didn't believe it, certainly not. And then they began to watch how to foretell things to come into pass. And never one time, I'm 46 years old, and it has never one time in those years has ever failed one bit. And you got a magazine tonight with prophecies already wrote out, just exactly what will come to pass, wrote in print. Watch and see if it does or not. See, see if it does. It'll be just letter by letter the way it says. It's never failed. What is it? It's not me. It's him. And then on the river, my first ordained in the Baptist church, 23-year-old boy, or man, God come down that day when I was baptizing 500 at the river and appeared in that same light. The papers packed articles of it. And then later on, they said, oh, well, it might have been psychology. When it come into the meetings and people, some people so close to God, or may it not have been that, may it was for them, some people can see things and some doesn't see things. No one's seen, no one in the, all the observatories that the big star passed over. How many Christians believe that actually them wise men followed the star? Let's see your hand. History doesn't quote it anywhere. There's no other place in the Bible, any place else. But the wise man, it was given to them to see the star. And they kept time by the stars. And it passed over and hung over Jesus when he was two years old. Now, notice again, when Paul was on his road down to Damascus to arrest those people, a great light flashed in front of him so bright that it even made his eyes go out. And the man standing there, the soldiers and so forth around him, they couldn't see no light. They didn't know nothing about the light, but it was so real to Paul until it put his eyes out and other mortal men standing right there looking and straining their eyes and couldn't see a thing. See, therefore, on the platform or wherever it may be, Jesus Christ, who was that light? Jesus Christ. Who is it that I persecute, Lord? He said, I, Jesus. And it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. See, it was Jesus in a form of a light that was so real to Paul it put his eyes out. 
but the people standing around couldn't see it. And many times, night after night, frankly, right not two seconds ago, I was looking at the same thing. That's right. And it's not two foot from where I'm standing right now. That same. But you see, it's in another dimension. See, it's, an, it's, it's given for some. And then in God in his love and mercy, not because of me, a poor, unworthy creature, no, sir, but because of the church and the people. Because it, you'll be without an excuse at the day of judgment. The great American Photographer Association, after many newspapers that took it, caught it in their camera. Then one night at Houston, Texas, God permitted his picture of his son in the same form that St. Paul seen him in to be photographed and got George J. Lacey of the FBI fingerprinting document to come from California to Houston, Texas to put it into the shell building, into the laboratory and examine it on of ultra ray lights and everything else for days after days. And he walked out a firm critic of mine and shook my hand and said, Brother Branham, the light struck the lens. It was there. And said, the mechanical eye of this camera won't take psychology. The light was there. And if I die tonight, my testimony is true. The same Lamb of God that was provided for blind Bartimaeus is provided for everything that you have need of tonight. You'll only look and live, my brother. Look and live. Shall we pray? Dear God, who brought again Jesus from the dead, raise him up on the third day because your prophet David said that he'd not be a partaker of corruption. Neither would you leave his soul in hell, so he rose up before his body corrupted. And he said, when he was here on earth, I came from God. Sure, he was a great Shekinah light that was with the children in the wilderness. And he said, I go back to God, the great Shekinah light that met Paul on the road to Damascus. And here you are today by infallible proofs by mechanical devices, by the witness of the Holy Ghost, that you haven't left your people, that your people has left you. We become so dull and sense-bound till we count upon our senses for all things. And Father, dear, may every man, woman, boy, or girl here tonight step out of the senses of this earth-bound condition and look yonder to Calvary and know that Jesus, the Son of God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father God, I pray that you'll send him tonight the great Shekinah. May he come so close into this building that some people can tell that's what's moving around in the building. That's the reason their spirits are disturbed even at this time is because that he's here. And may his all great presence anoint this poor unworthy person tonight to prove to the fellow that might be a little skeptic that you are here and do the same things tonight with your church that you did in the days gone by with your son, Christ Jesus. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, and help us to be your servants. Bless these people. Make them humble-hearted and receive the gospel. For we ask that in Jesus' name, my beloved son, amen. <laughs>
Now, children, and under the interpretation of sin means unbelief. There's only one sin, that's unbelief. All other of these more immoral acts are only attributes of that one, unbelief. He that believeth not is condemned already. So you must believe. Now we're going to pray for some of the sick people. I believe they said they give out the prayer cards. I believe they had a hundred give out. Yesterday in X's, I believe. So we started, we started from 100 last night, wasn't that right? We went at 100 and come backwards, wasn't it, or something? Let's start from X number one then tonight and go up to about who has prayer card number one. X number one, n- number. <laughs> bless your heart, sweetheart. A little girl raised up her hand. God bless that little child. All right, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let those stand first, if you will. And if the pianist will card or the organist, pardon me, sister, only believe again, will you? X number one to to ten. How many while these are taking their position? If you can't get up now, if your number is calling, you can't get up, just raise your hand. Ushers will pack you when your number is called. X, 1 to 10. Now, how many in here just now while the Holy Spirit is here? Uh, you believe this is the Holy Spirit? Is there a sinner friend in here would say, by this, God... I am a sinner, and I want you to remember me now. I, I, we won't call you to the altar. Altar services are fine. We believe in it. But yet the Bible said as many as believed was added to the church. Will you raise your hand and say, remember me, God. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. That's good. God bless you, lady. That's good. God bless you, lady. That's fine. God bless you, brother. God bless you and you and you. That's fine. In the balconies, up above, someone say, God, remember me. I, I want to come to you in peace someday. God bless you, sir. That's fine. I want to be remembered in prayer, Brother Branham. Uh, I, I want you to pray for me. I'm raising my hand to God right just now. Would you do it? Someone else while we're waiting? All right. Someone else raise your hand. Say, remember me. Someone hasn't raised their hand yet. God bless you, lady. May the Lord grant them. All right. Now, let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, may everyone that raised their hand just now, something struck their heart. They know they're in the divine presence, though they may not be able to see it as we see it now. In this great Shekinah glory. But they, there's something about their human soul that senses that. They know there's something somewhere. They don't know just where it's at. But they know that something has strangely struck them. Let us listen to the word of God. He said, no man can come to me except my father draws him. So, Lord, may they be conscious to know that they're not anywhere different than sitting in the presence of the Lord Jesus. His spirit is here. The great Shekinah glory is now in the temple tonight. I pray, Father, that you'll save them. May they accept it just now in their hearts. For we ask that in his Jesus' name, amen. All right, we got, how many was that, 10? 
All right, now 10 to 15. Stand up. X 10 to 15. Line right up. Have we got some more room over there, brethren? Got some more room? Who has X 11? I see your hand. Come up. If you can. 11, all right. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <clears throat> it doesn't matter how many stands up, but we just don't want everybody standing, so you have to be waiting, and we have to have some kind of a order about it, because if you don't, it's just a clamor, and you're over the platform, and you can't get an order for nothing. Now, slowly, while they're taking their positions, let us sing softly now. You love that song, Only Believe. You know, I heard it sang in about 20-something different languages calling me to the platform. And someday, if Jesus takes me before he comes visibly in a body of flesh to receive his church, and I have to be buried, and it falls my lot to go into the dust of the earth as a grain of corn, I, I've got it fixed here to go to sing that when they're putting me down in the grave. If you hear about me, it's gone away, you stop just a few minutes, kind of hum that to yourself and say, in glory, he still believes. I do. I do. You think I'll be conscious of it? Sure. Certainly I'll be. Samuel, after he'd been dead a long time, there he stood. He was still a prophet, too. He had his prophet robe on. The old witch that had called him in paradise looked at him and said, I see God's raising up. He not only had his prophet robes on, but he was still a prophet. He told him what was going to happen the next day, and it was that way. Sure, we don't die. We die to one another, but we're still in the presence of God. Amen. Jesus isn't dead. He said, because I live, you live also. That's in my heart, just bedded there for eternity. And I believe it. And I know that he's here tonight. And I know that he does all things and does it well. Now, friends, when Billy come and got me tonight, he said, on the road over, he said, Daddy, said, you're holding people a little too late, and I've noticed I got awful late. I'm sorry. And knowing that everything's to be the way it is, it's quarter after now, about 17 after by the clock there. Well, I wish you'd do me a favor tonight, will you? Now, just for the sake of the gospel, if you just sit still just a moment, don't be moving around. Just sit real still. And maybe if you don't believe it, just don't just sit still and say, well, I'll, I'll pray to God if it's true to make it known to me. Now, there's many people here that's sick, perhaps many that doesn't even have prayer cards. But Jesus Christ knows all about you. Do you believe that? Amen. He can make you well. Have faith now. How many doesn't have prayer cards and wants to be healed? Let's see your hand. I don't care where you're at. All right, that's... Now, you just touch him like the woman touched him. Just touch him. Say, he's the high priest, my Lord. I, I'm not counting on this three dimensions that I live in. I'm going to you by faith. I'm coming. I'm going to ask you now to be merciful to me and grant my healing. And he'll do it. He's faithful who has promised. Do you believe that? It certainly is. Now, just be real quiet and reverent. And now I want to put this to the people. Well, I think they're still lining up some of the prayer line over there. I want to give this to the people. If Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, then he will be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I, I believe as a Christian that he has and is now just the same as he was in the days gone by when he was here in flesh, only he's here in spirit form working through individuals that by the foreknowledge of God before the world was ever formed, he knew that these individuals would be on earth. You believe that? That's Bible. You're not something because you desire to be something. You're something, you're what you are by the will of God. See? God hath set in the church. See? See? Don't get in the flesh. It'll never work. Abide where God puts you. See, it's by gifts and callings are without repentance. They're foreknowledge of God. God don't. 
He didn't just set an ironclad rule that you would or wouldn't, but in his foreknowledge, let him be able to predestinate by the foreknowledge. Predestination looks back to foreknowledge, foreknowledge looks to destiny. But he is here, and he's here tonight. And if he will prove himself alive with you tonight in miracles, supernatural, just like he did here on earth, will every person in here believe on him with all your heart? Will you do it? Then pray, and pray for me. Now you realize what I'm standing here? Would someone like to take my place? I'll be glad if to come up to pray for the sick. Now, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to you. And I don't say that the Holy Spirit will do it. I don't know. It's up to him. I'm just his servant. Now, is the prayer line ready? All right. Who is this the first? Or is this the first lady? All right. You're the, all right. Here come here, lady. Now, if you just give your undivided attention to the Lord Jesus, now just shut off all the skeptic out of your heart. Moses, the prophet, was given two signs to perform before the children of Israel. He performed them once, then all Israel followed him to the promised land. If Jesus can be proven tonight to be alive, and the only way they could be a man come here with scars in his hands, that could be a hypocrite. See, that could be anything deceiving. The devil could appear like that. But if Jesus appears, he'll appear in the same way that he said he would appear in, not nothing contrary. So if Jesus will appear here tonight and do the things that he said he would do, then you believe on him with all your heart. Now, I suppose the lady here before me, I suppose we're strangers to each other, are we, lady? All right. Now, the lady standing here, just she's the first person. The reason that I bring her and have her here out to myself is first the anointing. You're aware that something's here. Now, we're not going to rush. Take your time. And we're, you'll be reverent. And now, we're aware that something's here. Now, let's see what the Bible said. The Bible said, if two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. I'll be in their midst always, ever, to the end of the world. I'll be with them. And these things that I do shall you also. Now, here's a woman just like it was with our Lord standing at the well. I'm a man. She's a woman. He was a man. The woman at the well, well she was a Samaritan lady. Now, I do not know this woman. He didn't know that woman. But he went to talking to her. And as he, he talked to her, well, he found out where her trouble was. And he told her where her trouble was. And it, it had excited her so till she run into the city and, and she began to say, come see a man. That is true, isn't it, as Christian Bible readers? St. John 4. Nathaniel came to him and he stood and he told Nathaniel where he was, something he'd done before he come, and told him he was a believer. Nathaniel said, you're the son of God. And many, 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 he just on down, down. It happened. Now, if it's Christ, he can do the same thing. If I can yield myself to his spirit, you might yield yourself to his spirit, go to shouting. Someone else might yield their spirit and go to preaching. But when I yield my spirit, visions break because I was born for that. Now, if I can be yielded to the blessed Holy Spirit and he can tell me what our sister What's her trouble or what she's here for or something about it that you know I don't know? How would I know you? We were born probably many miles apart and years apart and the first time in life we've ever met. If that's true, raise up your hand. How does the people see? I know nothing about the woman at all. God knows that. But if he can, by his Holy Spirit, let me know, well, she's here for some purpose. Maybe she's sick. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's got trouble. Maybe she's standing there for somebody else. I don't know. See, he does. But if he'll tell me something about her, you will accept then that that's, or say he'd tell me what you're here for. Then you'll accept as he thinking, believing, and knowing that he's sure to give it to you. Is that right? Will the rest of the audience believe that he would do the same thing for you?